Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about uh, how to relate uh, the equilibrium constants, the Kc and the Kp. So recall the Kc is going to be an equilibrium constant in terms of the concentrations and the Kp is going to be expressing the equilibrium constant in terms of the partial pressures. So Kp involves only when you have the gas reactants or products being involved. If you don't have gases, uh, gas phases in the reactants and, and the products, then you don't really have any way of expressing that particular equilibrium in the form of Kp. Now, let me take in a simple example. If I have a nitrogen gas reacting with the hydrogen gas, and then it sets up an equilibrium with the ammonia, and when I do balance this equation, uh, all of these phases are going to be in the gas form at this particular moment. And when I do this, uh, balance this, we're going to have 3 in front of H2 and we're going to have 2 in front of NH3. Now I can go ahead and express this particular equation in the form of Kc and in the form of Kp. That's because I have the gases and the reactants and the products. So let me go ahead and write down what the Kc expression is going to look like. For the Kc expression, I would go ahead and write down the concentration of NH3 to the power of 2 divided by the concentration of N2 to the power 1 times the concentration of H2 to the power 3. Now, if I want to go ahead and express this particular equation in the form of partial pressures, then I can go ahead and write down the Kp. So the Kp for this pr equation would be it's still going to be the same in terms of arranging your products and the reactants. So you're still going to have your products on the top and your reactants going to be in the denominator. So I'll, instead of writing concentrations, however, I'm going to be writing the partial pressure. So I will write down the partial pressure of NH3 to the power of 2, or square that, just because you still have 2 as a coefficient there. And then divide that by the partial pressure of N2 times the partial pressure of H2 to the power 3. So that's going to be your Kp expression for this particular reaction. Now suppose I have a reaction where I'm doing maybe CaCO3 solid and that's going to be in equilibrium with calcium oxide. That's going to be CaO and that's also going to be solid plus carbon dioxide and that's going to be the gas. Now when I'm writing the Kc expression for this particular one, remember we don't really include the solids in the equilibrium constant expressions. That's because their concentration does not affect the equilibrium constants. So it's just going to be the concentration of CO2 to the power 1. Now how would the Kp going to look like for this particular equation? Now remember, when you're doing the Kp, you're only going to be including the gases because it's only going to be the gases that would have some sort of pressure. You're not going to be getting any pressures from the solids or the liquids and even the aqueous solutions. So only for the gases when you're writing the Kp's. So it's just going to be the partial pressure of CO2 and that's pretty much it. Now, the take home message here is when you're writing in a heterogeneous equilibrium and when you're writing the Kc, you write you include the gases and the aqueous phases. You don't include the liquids and the solids. But when you're writing the Kp, the Kp only involves with the gases. The Kp does not even involve the aqueous solutions because even aqueous solutions will not have that much of pressure in there. Okay, so how do I really relate the Kc and the Kp? I'm not really going to draw the equation. It's more or less uh, knowing what the equation is going to be. So the Kp is actually going to be equal to the Kc times RT to the power delta N. So now you may wonder what this delta N is going to be. Your delta N is actually going to be uh, the gas moles of products minus the gas moles of reactants. So you're going to have to look for the delta N values. For example, the delta N for this particular reaction, so maybe I can go and change the color there, the delta N for this second reaction that we have written, we don't really have any gas in the reactant. We don't ha we have 
one gas moles in the products, which is only the CO2. So it's just going to be 1 minus 0, which is just going to be 1. And when I'm looking at maybe the delta N for this N2, uh, H2 reaction, so I'll go ahead and do the gas moles in this particular case is going to be 2 for the product side minus on the reactant side I got 1 for the N2 and I got 3 for the H2. So it's extremely important to be able to figure out the change uh, in the values of the gas moles or the delta N. So it's going to be 2 minus 4 and that's going to give you minus 2. Now this is this one equation you want to make sure you memorize, you are really familiar with it because that's going to get used a lot. Under what conditions? So usually the question is asked when would you have the Kp equals the Kc? Well, the only time when the Kp and the Kc would be equal to one another if this whole term, which we have as um, Rt, the Rt terms becomes 1. Under what condition it's going to become 1? Well, if you have the delta N to be 0, or another way of saying your gas moles on both reactant sides and the product sides are going to be the same. And another way of saying the delta N has to be zero. So that's an important thing you want to make sure you know. So let's actually try to do a problem to kind of clear everything away here. So suppose I got this um, reaction here, which uh, it says we have at 23 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be degrees Celsius there. A mixture initially contains uh, uh, methane, CH4 and H2S. So what I'm really doing here, I'm having the CH4 plus H2S, and both of those are going to be the gases initially. And then it's going to be at an equilibrium to make the hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas is going to be one of the products. And then your other product is going to be CS2. Everything is going to be in the gas phase. Make sure the reaction is balanced. If it's not, uh, if you're not given a balanced equation, so you're going to have um, a two here because there's a two sulfurs on the product side, and in doing so, I would have to put four here. And the carbons seems to be balanced now. There's only one carbon on both sides. You got a total of eight hydrogens. That's fine. You got a total of two sulfurs. That's fine. And then I'm given. Um, the equilibrium concentrations, um, I'm not really given the equilibrium concentrations, I'm given an initial concentration. So I can go ahead and make an, a so-called an ice table. So ice table means initial, the change, and what's going to be at equilibrium. I have 0.5 molar for, let's kind of change the color there. It's got 0.5 molar for the CH4 and 0.8 molar for the H2S and initially we're not going to have any of your products so we're just going to write down zero for those and then at the end of the day or at equilibrium we're told we have a 0.44 molar hydrogen gas so I'm going to have 0.44 molar hydrogen gas at the end. It's going to be the change here. We don't really know the Kc and the Kp. That's what we're actually trying to figure out. So since we've given the concentrations, we can go ahead and figure out what the Kc is going to be. Kc for this particular case is just going to be the concentration of CS2 times the concentration of hydrogen to the power of 4 divided by the concentration of CH4 times the concentration of H2S to power 2. And these are going to be your equilibrium concentrations. So we don't really know any of those equilibrium concentrations except the H2. So we're going to have to work our math backward here to figure out what these rest of the concentrations are going to be. So when I'm looking at the change here, I know I'm making 0.44 molar H2 because initially you have zero so you must be making 0.44 to get a 0.44 at the end of the day. Now the question is how much are you going to be making for the CS2? Well you got to do you got to look at the stoichiometry relations. Remember there is a one in front of CS2 and there is a four in front of a, um, H2. So for every mole of a CS2 you are making four moles of H2. So they're not one to one mole ratio. So as a result, how much CS2 you're going to make? You're only going to be making 0.11. So if it, if it does become hard how, you're gonna, how you really got 0.11, but you want to get in the habit of quickly 
getting those by looking at the stoichiometry relation. So you can also do something like this. I'm starting out with 0.44 moles of H2. And if I'm starting out with 0.44 moles of H2, I'm trying to figure out how many moles of CS2 I'm going to be making and uh, how many and I'm going to get rid of the H2 moles. So um, then you write down the stoichiometry relation there. So there's one in front of CS2 and there's four in front of H2. So it's 0.44 divided by four. That's going to give you 0.11. Or another way of saying it's a 1 to 4 mole ratio for every 1 mole of CS2 you're going to have 4 moles of H2 or 4 times of H2 will be made. So as a result your CS2 concentration change is going to be 0.11. So I'm going to have 0.11 CS2 made at the end of the day. Now all these products are going to be made from your reactant so you must be losing your reactants and that's what you really got to figure out how much reactant you're going to be losing so since you already figured out the cs2 the cs2 and the ch4 they are one to one mole ratio if you can uh, kind of look at, look at here and you can also do in relation to the h2 it doesn't really matter like if i want to focus on the ch4 versus the H2. Again, this is a 1 to 4 mole ratio. For every 1 mole of CH4 you're losing, you're making 4 moles of H2. So it's going to be in a very similar scenario as that of CS2. And as a result, you must be losing 0.11 moles here. Now remember, here you're going to be losing because you are reacting your reactants to make the product. Now there is going to be a good test for you guys. How much H2S you're going to be losing here. Well, do your math here. The, if I focus on, let me change the color there. If I focus on maybe the CS2 momentarily and uh, the H2S, the CS2 and the H2S is a 1 to 2 mole ratio. So another way of saying for every 1 mole of CS2 made, I'm going to have to lose 2 moles of H2S. So if I'm making 0.11 moles of CS2, I'm going to be losing twice of that for the H2S. So the twice of 0.11 is going to be 0.22. And you don't really have to do in relation to the CS2. I did in relation of CS2 just because it's easier to look at it. But if I do in relation to H2S with H2, how's that going to work? Let's see. Uh, I'm doing H2S with H2. I have two in front of H2S. I got four in front of H2. So it's, you know, two to four mole ratio or another way of saying it's going to be one to two mole ratio. For every one mole of H2S lost, you're going to be making two moles of H2. If I'm making 0.44 moles of H2, I must be losing half of the H2S. So that's why it's point to two in the subtraction there. You do this math here, I got 0.5 minus 0.11, so that's going to be 0.39. So it's 0.39 here. And then we'll do the same thing now. Uh, 0.8 minus 0.22 is going to be 0.58. So those are your equilibrium concentrations. So now all we really got to do, just go back in this equilibrium constant expression and plug those values in there. So I'm going to have for a CS2, it's going to be 0.11. For a H2, it's going to be 0.44. And don't forget the powers. So this is going to be power 4. Divide that by the CH4. The CH4 is going to be 0.39. And then the H2S is going to be 0.58 to the power 2. So then let's see what that comes out to be. All right. After doing this math, I'm getting 0.0314. That's going to be your KC value. Okay, so once you get the KC value, I need to go ahead and figure out what the KP is going to be. And we already know what the equation is we're going to be using for the KP and the KC. So remember your KP at this point is going to be equal to the KC times RT to the power delta N. So let's go back and figure out what the delta N is going to be for this particular reaction. And uh, I'm just going to write that uh, down here. 
So how many moles, how many gas moles do you have on the product side? Well, we got one CS2 and we got four H2. So that's going to be a total of five minus how many gas moles you have on the reactant side. We got two in front of H2S and we got one in front of CH4. So it's going to be three. So the delta N is actually going to be two. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. So delta N is two. Your R is going to be the gas constant, which is 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters moles minus one Kelvin minus one and your temperature I believe the temperature was given in earlier well, it's 23 degrees Celsius you want to make sure the temperature gets converted to the Kelvin scale so it's 23 plus 273.15 so that's going to be 296.15 Kelvin so now we know everything, so all we really got to do is just plug those values in there. So your KC was 0 0.0314, your RT is going to be 0 0.0821, I'm not going to write down the units there, and then your temperature is going to be 296.15, and the delta N value is going to be 2. So, well, do your math here, and let's see what that comes out to be. All right, so I'm getting... 18.56 kp value so that's going to be in terms of the pressures and the kc was in terms of the concentrations so this is a typical questions you could be asked where you may be given the kp and ask for the kc or you you'd be given for the kc and ask for the kp if you have any questions feel free to leave any comments in the section below